Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Live from the Sword Coast podcast. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon master this evening. You may notice, uh, if you are a regular viewer, that my voice still sounds a little weird. Uh, that is because I'm still fighting the same cold that I had from last week. I keep making fortitude saves over and over and over again without much success. So I guess it depends on the addition. I'm either saving versus, uh, or I mean, a constitution save, a fortitude save, or I guess save versus death? I don't know. Um, however, uh, notwithstanding my weird voice, uh, tonight, we're going to be continuing on with our ongoing campaign, playing the Barrow Maze complete product published by, um, I'm sorry, uh, written by uh, Greg Gillespie, uh, and we'll be playing this using, yep, Kevin Crawford's very cool Scarlet Heroes, uh, can or, um, uh, OSR game. This is, uh, and actually our version of of uh, Scarlet Heroes is, is uh, hacked with uh, ideas from his uh, revised stars without number and some other ideas stolen from other products. And you can find the link to the house, excuse me, house rules in the uh, video below. Um, with me tonight are the stars of the Wednesday night session. And I'm not going to go the order you logged in because I can't remember what that was. Uh, I'm going to go the order <laughs> I have you guys in my um, uh, little uh, set of avatars here. First up, is Jeffrey. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff, and I'm playing Badonk, the acrobatic goblin monk, and tonight I'm drinking Akatoshin. Mm -hmm. Next up is Steve-O. Yo, I am playing Dwarven Silverstone, a uh, Dwarven Storm Druid, and I'm drinking Grolsch. Grolsch, very nice. Is it Dutch? Uh, that's a good question. I think it is. Uh, and next up is yeah. Chad. Hey, everybody. I'm Chad. I'm playing Roan Scar's Horse, a demonic-blooded half-orc criminal sorcerer. Uh, and I am only drinking water right now because I just finished a tall glass of Hellcat Maggie Irish whiskey. <laughs> Bracing yourself for the barrow more. And last but not least, oh, sorry, last but not least, Dave. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Dave. I am playing Wes Littlefoot, the halfling ranger uh, with a warrior background. And I'm currently not drinking anything except for eggnog and nutmeg, but that could change when I put these headphones down and go get some Captain Morgan spiced rum. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm being a giant uh, uh, wimp, uh, and I'm enjoying my lovely herb tea. However, it's it's I'm going wild tonight with licorice spice tea. So, hoo -hoo -hoo, look out! I am living large this evening. Okay, so um, what do we recall? Last session was a bit of a hmm, how would we put this delicately? Uh, it was a bit of a uh, eventful trip out uh, where we met your friendly neighborhood DM's new favorite monster. The piranha fly. <laughs> oh my god. I can guarantee that piranha flies will show up in like every fucking game I run from now on. <laughs> Why are there piranha flies in Traveler? <laughs> uh, yeah, so and then um, tonight we find you guys uh, let's see here. Back uh, in the Brazen Strumpet nursing your wounds from uh, the previous expedition. And what uh, we see sitting around the table, let's see who has returned. Once again, uh, Werb and Silverstone has mysteriously uh, returned. And uh, let's see here, your hirelings. Who is your other hireling? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, what was his name? Was it Greg not Gregory, was it? Um, Gerlick. 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 So Gerlick is back as well, too, because we'll... Uh, Give you guys a full party uh, for tonight. Um, before we get going as well, who would like to take control of Gerlick uh, tonight and who would like to control um, Vaz? So Gerlick is a spellcaster. Maybe one of the non-spellcasters pick him. Yeah, I was controlling Vaz last time. Somebody else can do that. Gerlick is really fragile too. <laughs> I'll take care of Vaz. You may not have to play him long, guys. <laughs> sure, Badonk, I can, you can take care of the garlic. Yeah, I can do that. You got your own pet wizard now. 
All right. Okay. Let me know. I'm just uh, fixing his uh, token here, guys. You'd think people would learn not to be your henchman. <laughs> you, you'd think, but... Uh, okay, the odd is, one gets confused. What is going on here? There we go. Okay, okay great. heard about the Lucky Goblin, though. I think the Barrymore is an employer's market, though, so... Uh... <laughs> it really is. What the fuck? I'll give you this little word, weird prompt showing up in my uh, screen. Okay, so can you guys see um, Gerlich's health bar and Vaz's? Yep. yep. Awesome. Okay. So uh, we will pick up. Uh, we'll, we'll not waste any time here, and we'll pick up in the uh, – it's morning in the Brazen Strumpet, uh, which is the – for those listening at home or who may be joining us for the first time, uh, the Brazen Strumpet is the – our uh, friendly neighborhood uh, miscreants uh, local watering hole uh, operated by Ballo and uh, staffed by – Two lovely, charming barmaids and one pretty surly barmaid. Um, <laughs> so you guys are awake on your back. And uh, I think you have been, uh, before we got in, you've been filling garlic and we're been in with what, um, you know, what, what you did last time. You made it all the way to the barrel maze. Oh, and speaking of which, uh, let's hear Chad. Uh, didn't you, did you just ask me uh, what the barrel maze looked like? Well, that, that's a good question. Yeah. Let me show you. Boom, look at that. Yeah, the barrel. Like money. So much money. <laughs> so that was the barrel. Made for, you did get a chance to peek inside. You know what you saw inside? Yes. Piles of money. Mm. You know, Kev, these look like they're right out of a book or something. It's amazing. Yeah, for those of us at home, these all the illustrations I'm displaying here, this is all stuff that's from the complete barrel maze. Uh, it's It's got tons of, of great, uh, you know, hand to your players or show to your players illustrations to help uh, uh, capture the atmosphere of uh, the barrel maze. So uh, one of many great reasons for why it's such a great product. Speaking of setting the mood. So this is the next morning you said, Kev? Yes. From a lot. So how much should I have healed from overnight? You can uh, get yourself back up to full. I, I'm fine with that for tonight. Oh, okay. We'll start with, I, I just uh, finished topping everyone up. Wormen, you can feel free to top your uh, token back up as well. <clears throat> and so we're all ready to go straight out today, right, guys? We're not going to dilly-dally in town like we do. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, hold on. Just, you you want to pick yeah. fights with any henchmen? You, you don't want to, you know, get into a, a, a negotiation with HHR Huff and Puff. There's nothing mm -hmm. I can do to dissuade you from trying to go to the Barrow War. I guess no, we have we have death to defy. There we go. Right. Men and women on a mission. I like that. All right. So you might like more random encounters. Let's see what uh, shows up on the way to the uh, Barrow War. I'm just going to make sure we're not followed out of the town. You did speak fairly loudly uh, when you left the last time. That is very true. Yeah, he's going to make sure that we don't get followed. <laughs> I love that uh, Wes is routinely the guy who says the loud part quiet and the quiet part loud. <laughs> well, um, you know, he's not the smartest or charismatic. Um, so, Wes, when you joined the campaign, <clears throat> did you get a rumor? I'm trying to remember. Mm, I think we tied my rumor into. Uh, oh no, that was just the background on my magic item. So why don't you give me a D6 roll? Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll give your uh, your loose lips a little uh, reward here. Loose lips sink ships. Mm -hmm. Three. So here's what you've heard. Oh, actually, this is a, so that's a repeat. Oof. Repeat, repeat. Ooh. Uh, what you've heard is that there are a degenerate race of men that were uh, that, that are of the same blood that built the Barrow Maze in the first place. And that they have for centuries lived underground and have become twisted and freakish versions of of mankind in the interim corrupted no doubt by the presence of the barrow maze itself and centuries of life under the earth
Now let's see what uh, event <clears throat> happens today. Let's just see. Right. Yep. Someone give me a percentile roll, please. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I, I apologize for uh, for actually for the players and for anyone listening at home. I'm still shaking that cold, so I'll be clearing my throat and coughing a, a fair amount. I know that sounds fucking gross, so sorry for that. Uh, 53, okay, thank you. Okay. I All really right. like the uh, dice rollers in the character sheet, Kev. Oh, thanks, Sam. Yeah. I was goofing around with that. It's just it's nice not to have to roll to attack and then change dice and roll damage. Oh, but, totally. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I shouldn't say thanks. I thought you meant the the little uh, tab. No, I, yeah, yeah. The the to be honest, like the 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 best of the um, roll twenty sheets that I have found is either the uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord one or the 5th edition one. The 5th edition D&D one is fucking crazy good. Probably that's the best because it's got this companion, and you can just drag and drop stuff in, like spells. Oh, you nice. can drag and drop all the information, and it'll populate it for you, and then you click on it, and it'll cast. Like, it's, it's fucking crazy good. Uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord is a very close second. It's a really great and... Uh, uh, well-functioning sheet. That is on my list, incidentally, of games to play in 2019 because Chad hasn't tried Shadow of the Demon Lord yet. Nor have I. Oh, Dave, that's right. You haven't either. Well, yeah, I don't know, guys. Like, it, it takes a lot to ask me to run a horror fantasy, but, uh, you know. <laughs> I really like uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord. It's one of my favorites. Me too. And I've got um, in the soft cover. I got a soft cover version that uh, from... Uh, you can get from um, drive through RPG now, so because my hardcover, the, the pages are feel like they're getting a little loose. <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. Bargle, <clears throat> Bargle, it is someone evil. chatting in our group that says oh. "Evil Whispers." <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Bargle was one of the guys who played in my uh, what do you call it? Um, the uh, uh, one shot, uh, or the the uh, online convention a few months back. I think you can switch like whatever character you select. Yeah, <laughs> nice. he's, also one, <laughs> he's also one of my favorite uh, Mistara villains. So. Yeah, well, it's actually for Chad. You'll appreciate this. So for for the uh, one shot, the characters' names were Bargle, Huxley, Ruggen, and Elena. <laughs> uh, which are all character names from the uh, red box version of D and D. So, okay. Um, all right. So let's. Um, yeah. Uh, so the the event is is nothing uh, eventful. Um, let us. Okay. Uh, are you guys going to set out then, or is there anything yeah, else right. you want to do in town? <laughs> Now that I know I can change who I'm typing text as, I can have a conversation with myself amongst other characters. <laughs> well, Dave, it's been fun playing the game with you. I see you've got your own one now. So. <laughs> okay, see you guys. <laughs> you know, it's a turnabout as fair play. Like, normally what I, ends up happening is we play D&D. &D, I get really uh, into drawing my character or drawing the other things and get distracted by that. Now I know what it's like to play with writers. So. <laughs> It's not very good it's dialogue. I'm just making it up on the fly here, but you know. First draft. First draft. Come on. I think Vasquez is going to call Girl a like pointy hat for as long as he survives. Well, he has four hit points, so <laughs> we'll see about that. Oh, sorry. Who is taking Gerlich then? And who's taking Vas? I was going to control Gerlich, and Dave was going to control Vaz. That's nice. Okay. So let's see here. Let's. Uh, Set out into oh, uh, Steve. I'm gonna heal your character for you. Watch this. Ready? Thank you. Why do I have this in the middle here? Jesus, I got this insert horizontal rule thing here. What's going on here? I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, so uh, wait, that didn't work. Looks good. All right, great. Okay, so let's uh 
Ladonk, are you going to be off to the side again? The stealth thing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we'll establish a marching order. Okay, let me just clear out these tokens here. Boom. Boom. All right, and we'll set you guys out into... <clears throat> oh, yeah, uh, marching order. So Ladonk is off to the side. Uh, take the top as the front of the... Uh, um, front of the group and go ahead and arrange yourselves however you'd like, guys. Definitely don't want to be bringing up oh. rear. George is watching right now, too. George, uh, once a, uh, you may not have heard us last week, but George, thank you so much for your very, very generous donation. <laughs> Hero Save thing. That was awesome. <clears throat> okay, we got everybody in uh, in line here. You want to squeeze in the middle there, Urban? I can. Uh, here, I'll, I'll move. Uh, make Urban a little smaller here. He is a dwarf, after all. Okay, so Urban is. So uh, Roan is taking the is taking point, and Vaz is holding up the rear. Uh, well, Wes is up front leading the group. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. Great. That sounds like a great plan. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, let's erase these two guys here. Um, okay, so then uh, you guys set out into the barrel maze. Let's see here. Oh, so good. <sighs> well, we're off to see the barrel maze, the wonderful barrel maze in the moors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, um, so we got uh, one thing here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. You know, the thing I love about this the most is we're getting a chance to see so many different things in play here. Oh, yeah, like three giant scorpions or <laughs> piranhas. This is awesome. <laughs> Where's that treasure goblin that you always see in Diablo? Can we smack <laughs> yeah, him really. a couple times? <laughs> yeah. Have uh, okay, up some so magic items? What you, uh, <clears throat> what we see, guys, is uh, I'll uh, cut and paste you guys in this order over to uh, the Barrow Maze map. So let's refresh our memory of what it's like going in to the Barrow Maze. Do not like... The barrel maze, of course, is perfectly silent. Oh, what the fuck? So, uh, <laughs> this, so what happens uh, when you don't put shit on the map layer? <laughs> okay. So um, the uh, barrel maze, of course, is deathly silent. And not even the sounds of insects disturb the sound of, of the uh, party's feet sloughing their way through the mud and reeds and uh, whatnot. Oh, we got two garlics. Oh, we got <laughs> one in the yeah. corner. Yeah. Um, uh, as you guys are making your way through one point where y you've left the sort of canopy uh, where you uh, are sort of a lot of the heavy, you know, reaching trees uh, have, uh, have dispersed. It's a fairly open part, but even in the open areas here, it doesn't, it has that claustrophobic feel because of the omnipresent mist that prevents you from really seeing more than like 50 to, you know, a hundred uh, yards beyond where you're, you're walking. And there's that muffled sound as well from the, um, uh, from within the, um, within the mist. And it's in there you, from somewhere within the mist, you hear this weird mix of, uh, it sound, it's a sound that sounds almost half like a uh, um, bird of prey's cry and half the kind of um, screeching that you'd hear from uh, a large lizard. It's, I figured I'll not make like that. Not a sound that the wyvern made though, right? No, that is a much, much deeper and more distinctive. This is a, yeah. uh, it definitely sounds like it's from a smaller creature. Uh, you know what, Wes? I will let you make 
um, a uh, nature guardian. Yeah, I think nature guardian and um, wisdom uh, check for this because I think you're trying to recognize a sound that's not necessarily an intelligence thing. Um, let's see if you recognize what uh, what the sound is before. Uh, oh, who wants to start rolling for surprise for tonight? Uh, I don't think I got a turn last time, so I, you're up. I think it's Steve O is, uh, yeah. It's a D6? Uh, just a D6, yeah. On a roll of one or two, you're surprised. Nice. No surprise, so they're not surprised either. Let's roll well, the distance. Okay. Um, great. So with Wes's Nature Guardian being a specialist, yeah, that's gets drop, that's drop the worst dice. Yeah, so f uh, 13, nice. Yeah, <clears throat> you recognize this. Uh, there, uh, It is um, a large, not large, it's a flying reptile uh, that's about the size, oh my goodness, it's got wingspan of between 7 and 10 feet. Uh, but the, its actual body is fairly small. Um, the uh, inhabitants uh, of, in, in other regions, southern regions, uh, you've known them to be uh, uh, to be called skin wings, and that's because these things have their entire wings seem to be made of actual fibrous um, tissue or or uh, membrane rather than feathers, and their heads have these weird kind of conical pointed bits to them that are viciously sharp on the end, uh, and at the end of the uh, body like just like a bird it's got claws but these are almost like vicious talons that you would expect on a bird of prey or perhaps some other larger preying reptile um wes you definitely hear these all of you guys are not surprised you you have a chance to look up and you can see swirling whoosh, whoosh, above there's about uh five shadows that seem uh as if they suddenly are getting closer so guys Let's roll some initiative. Now, um, I want to try something else out tonight to see if this actually speeds things up because I, uh, in Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea, it's just like the group rolls initiative. So one person rolls and then um, th we do the same thing as with Surprise. One person rolls until they lose. When they lose initiative, that passes the next person. Because um, I think rather than rolling every individual person's initiative and taking stock of all that shit, we can just do it this way. Uh, so, who would like to roll initiative? Who's feeling lucky? Lucky Goblin. Sure. Lucky Goblin. Goblins are lucky. Yeah, Steve. Well, stick it, well I'm going to stick you with it because you didn't. Uh, you missed last session, so you weren't rolling surprise. Okay. Uh, and um, let's do this. Uh, anyone? Uh, sorry, is anybody casting spells this turn? No one's retreating. So, is anyone casting spells? No. No. Nope. nope, for Roan. Okay, so let's roll initiative. Steve, go ahead. I got it. Roll no. D eight. D eight, please. I got a three. Hey, <clears throat> so you guys are up first. So, well, who wants to go first? Wessel shoot. Okay. So they are. Let's see. They're about ninety feet away right now. Hmm. Sounds like good range for a short boat through the eye. Nice. Here we go. You draw back. Holy shit. Oh, that's a miss. Oh, the first one's a hit, though. Okay. That the first one's a one. Oh, crit. Nice, one. nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so that is uh, the plus six is... Oh, God. You did four points of damage? Fucking hell. Okay, so actually, Wes, you, you see these things, and um, these things are lesser foes, which means your damage carries over to the next one. So why don't you give us a cool narration of you fucking dropping four of these things? Um, four? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so Wes looks up in the sky and he's watching their flight patterns and seeing them twirl and looking to see the timing and then rips one, an arrow off and it shatters through the arm of one's wing and up through another one through the wing and just keeps penetrating through four until they all start like twirling down like broken leaves. <laughs> so you're waiting for that perfect shot. Okay. So it goes uh, pinwheeling down. Uh, there is one left. So go ahead and roll your fray dice. Let's see if you take all of them out. 
That was the Freydice, the second roll there. Oh, the second roll is Freydice. Oh, fuck me. Okay, so you um, yeah, you line up a shot, and there's just this flurry of arrows that suddenly go up in the air. And uh, from uh, when his bowstring comes to a stop, five of these things have dropped down, thwop, and sickeningly, uh, with a sickening thud into the moist earth. And there is now, once again, stillness in the barrel maze. Mistakes, anyone? <laughs> Gonna ask if they were good eating. And so, okay, that is um, that is that. You've made quick work of, of those critters. The rest of the trip to the barrow maze, or at least to the barrow mounds, is uneventful. So, nice. Let's now go to. Oops, wrong thing. Sorry, guys. Move the token over here. Boom. <clears throat> Next up is the actual barrel mounds. So let's put you back at square one here, guys. <clears throat> now, would you kindly roll here? Oh, nice. Nice. I mean, uh, no. Uh, go ahead and uh, move yourself there, Badonk. Uh, you guys can move four hexes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I think you have to change the map. Oh, no, wait, never mind. It's in the bottom. It's just so tiny. Bottom One, corner. two, three. I'm like looking up there. Let's avoid that obelisk thing. Yeah, the, <laughs> the really black one, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to go there. Did you, did you let our characters know that it was affecting you when we moved past it? I think you, you could see that it was affecting me, but I didn't say anything. Okay. Like the falling to your knees and cringing thing? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I've always been upright. Okay. So, um... Roan, you are up for surprise. Goody. Okay. So, you guys are making your way through the mist. And let's remind ourselves what the barrel mounds look like. Hands out. Barrel mound. Boom. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's rolling a uh, series of hills covered with uh, stones and uh, concealing the ancient tombs of some long forgotten culture. Uh, as you're making your way along there, however, they are shrouded in that same mist that permeates the uh, Barrow Moor. Um, as you guys are uh, making your way, whoop, oh, Urban just died. Um, <laughs> As you guys are making your way <laughs> uh, along through this, you get to one point um, led by Wes, and then you come scampering down uh, this fairly uh, st uh, steep incline until you come to rest about 60 yards away from this nest that as soon as you get there, this, oh, this stink hits you. It smells like a rubbish heap uh, in the sense of rotting meat and uh, decaying vegetable matter and feces. And what you uh, see fluttering around there first, you think are large, disgusting uh, birds. And then you hear, <laughs> and you look over, and there is a vile human woman's face, twisted in rage and uh, pockmarked with disgusting, rotted, but very sharp teeth. Uh, and they seem to be pulling and tearing apart bones. Uh, this, guys, is kind of what it looks like. If I can get my camera to focus. Come on, camera, work with me. Come on, camera. Camera. This. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, it does not want to show you. Oh. 
Okay, I'll give up. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Uh, it, it's an emaciated, uh, like humanoid form of a woman. Basically, imagine like a sickly, malnourished, and stained version of like an angel, but with soot black wings instead. And there are 17 of these things mm. all sitting <laughs> and turning kind of, and they all sort of look over. Um, they all sort of at the same time come to a and all get deathly quiet. I can tell you that you are not surprised, but you have surprised them. <coughs> <coughs> these things are about the same size as a oh yeah they're same about the same size as a person a short person mind you like a five foot tall and there's a lot of these things um not a stitch of clothing between any of the 17 either so um guys we don't need to roll initiative but uh, you do get to, uh, to make uh, the first uh, action before they take theirs. What are your thoughts, guys? Yeah, I don't think we want this, but <laughs> no, we don't. We don't want to fight these. But they've got but wings. They've seen. Know. They've seen us. They've seen us though, right? Like we, they've looked up and seen us. I will remind you guys that there is a mechanic in uh, this for running away from encounters. <laughs> I think that's a good call. <laughs> Try to lose them in the mist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. All right, guys. So yep. let's get, get to the, uh, the change rules here. Uh, okay. So there, uh, there are, let's see here. Um, ba, 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 there's five of you in total, uh, six of you in total. And the pursuing group is. So if we tripped Gerlic, that would be evil, right? Uh, it, it would definitely <laughs> be an evil act. Yes. <laughs> but just, can't, just curious because you no, know, you don't have to be faster than the monster. You just got to be faster than your friends. What's your alignment? Chaotic prick? Chaotic, <laughs> chaotic nothing. Let me see here. Two pursuers. All right. Okay. So uh, the, 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 the pursuing group is much bigger than you guys. You're six, which means... So right now, the evasion roll is a nine or higher. That's for you to escape from these things. Uh, what you guys can do is make uh, trait or make um, uh, skill checks, basically, or uh, attribute checks to try and uh, buff that number. First off, who is going to be making the evasion roll, guys? Um, what is the roll? It's is a it like D20. Uh, yeah, no, don't don't make it just yet because you want to see if you get modifiers to it first. So, uh, who would like to uh, take the? Who's feeling lucky tonight? I guess. Is it a trait roll? Nope, that's a d twenty roll. But you guys can make trait yeah. rolls to add to modify it. So first off, uh, who wants to make that dice roll, or do you want to roll? Uh, do your trait stuff first, and then make the uh, evasion roll. See how everyone's dice are are uh, shaken out. I don't mean to do that. So first off, Badonk, what do you think you would be doing to try and help with uh, the evasion? <clears throat> what do you think you could do to slow down your pursuers or uh, throw them off the pursuit or keep them, uh, keep your allies from being seen? Right. Remember last time what you were doing was base. I think like you were like throwing rocks from the, the sort yeah. of the edges of the thing. Right against the trolls to try and keep them distracted. Yeah, I think I'll do something similar. I mean, I'm probably the fastest runner, so... Hands down, I'll, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll um, sort of stay at a <laughs> slightly different angle and try and distract them with some rock throwing. Okay, so why don't you... Uh, that, to me, sounds like a dexterity check. Uh, and then do you think you've got a trait that would apply to that as well? Uh, I don't know. Probably not for what I'm doing here. Okay, so just go ahead and give me a... Dexterity uh, check. I think it's plus three from your dex, right? Yep. 
Let's see here. So that's just like, is it a one or a two D eight? Uh, two D eight. Remember, try, uh, checks are uh, uh, attacks or D twenties. Uh, checks are always going to be two D eight. Uh, Warvin, you'll be up next. What do you think you'll be doing to try and assist in this? Hey, mm -hmm. nice. So Badong's mm -hmm. adding a plus one. His efforts give plus one. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. Uh, it, it, I suppose it's too late to cast a spell now. Um, well, you could. What, what spell are you thinking? Obscuring Mist. Um, so you would... I don't think you could run away. Like To run is, is your action. You're kind of like running pell-mell. And if you're going to cast Obscuring Mist, you could stop and cast that and then try and run off. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe he'll do that. Okay, so then if uh, what I'll say then is uh, that's fine. So uh, that'll automatically give it another plus one to the uh, evasion roll. But what I'm going to say is that if you're caught, uh, there's a chance that you'll be caught on your own against a chunk of these uh, things because mm. you would have been running. Uh, everyone else took took off in a in a you know fucking run, whereas you were you took the time to cast your spell first and then you turned and ran. Right. So we'll see how this goes. I mean, and now you've suddenly got some uh, you got some skin in the the result of that evasion roll. So, but you got plus two to it so far. Roan, what are you doing? Um, and feel free to improv stuff with like your cantrips. Um, <clears throat> that depends on how the non detection spell works in this game. It's an illusionist spell, so if I can pull up my cloak hood and cast non -de non detection, yep. You try to do that. Okay, I think that that doesn't uh, um, activating a magic item isn't like casting an actual spell. It's not like a spell completion thing. Okay. So uh, one sec here. Let's see. <clears throat> that will be in uh, the advanced edition companion. So actually, there is a uh, I, legend or labyrinth lord is sort of like the the default uh, reference book that we've been using for. Uh, for most of the uh, spells and stuff like that, they just released a consolidated version where they combine the advanced uh, edition and the regular version of Labyrinth Lord into one book. So let's see here. Uh, unfortunately, they still kept the they still kept the organization like they did in the old game, where they have like cleric uh, spells, then you know um, druid spells, and then illusionist spells and whatnot. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass trying to find shit. Uh, let's see here. Non-detection. Uh, the caster and all within five foot radius become impossible to detect by divination spells. Okay. So just cl uh, clairaudience, clairvoyance, locate object and detect spells. Okay, so that's probably useless. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, did did, did, uh, did you spot any crystal balls amongst the uh, yeah, those critters? Uh, I'm I'm gonna say that as an experienced smuggler, I'm used to I'm used to hauling ass when things go south. <laughs> I, I would just... I would agree with that. <laughs> okay, so uh, why don't you if you're if you're uh, beaten feet, I think give me a Constitution and a smuggler check. Okay, <coughs> so that uh, trait roll plus con. Yes, please plus con modifier and plus one from your uh, smuggler. <laughs> Cheesy, it, it's the feds. <laughs> uh oh. That's not what I wanted to roll. I was trying to do the. I hit basic roll, not advanced roll here. There it is. Okay. One. Okay. Roll, can you? There we go. Well, the wind's picking up. Uh oh. All right, 14 is good enough. So you're sort of like, over here, go, 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 go. And uh, you're you're adding another plus one, so it's a net plus three so far. Wes, what are you doing to kind of help out here? Uh, <clears throat> Wes, that time we've surprised somebody else, and he re he gets a great bonus to attack when he's <laughs> when he's surprising someone. Uh, but that's all right; he'll put that <laughs> aside. And uh, who's actually thinking? Maybe I'll just fire a couple arrows into their group, and they look hungry enough. If they drop somebody, maybe they'll stop to eat but uh, they probably won't eat themselves. So um, he's actually going to use his uh, fleet-footed trait um, and scamper off rather loudly in a different direction than the rest of the group. Okay. Um, try and confuse the enemy and give them multiple... Okay. 
So both you and maybe there's like a uh, a second uh, when like you and Benonk sort of like lock eyes and then you both kind of woo, disappear off in different directions into the fog. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, give me a uh, dexterity and uh, uh, a dexterity uh, check, and then you can add your fleet feet to that as well. X. Let's see here. You know, I've continually been picturing your guy as, as like a, a proper hobbit now with no shoes on. Ooh. Yeah. That is just good huh? enough. So another plus one. So you just got plus enough. four. All right. So we got plus four to the evasion roll. The evasion roll needs to be a nine. Uh, so it needs to be a five or higher to evade these things and avoid combat. Who, and knowing that, that, that if they fail... That Werbin may be caught on his own, and uh, we may see a repeat of uh, uh, good old Sir Albus. <laughs> Who wants Steve? Do you want to take on that uh, that important role yourself, or what? How are the dice no, rolling? I guess I could do that. Here it comes big Fun. money. Come on, Steve O. You need a five or higher on a D twenty. Five, five or higher on a D twenty. Yep. You can do this. Here it comes. We can do this. Oh! <laughs> awesome. So there's maybe like a moment or two when when Werbin hears the, <laughs> the beating of wings, the screech of these things in in the back of your, uh, um, what do you call it, in the back of your, uh, or like j just behind your your head. Um, but you thankfully, you know, your little dwarven legs, <laughs> you know, uh, carry yourself forward, and you guys manage to to reconnect. Now let me uh, just, I'm gonna randomly. Um, place whoopsies, you guys, because you're running off into the thing. One, two, mm, mm, mm. oh, there's uh, actually six sides, so why don't I roll that dice? Okay, that's where you guys uh, ended up. Uh, you can see the um, that mound, and uh, as you look over, you're like, that thing looks familiar, and it's that uh, mound that you still haven't finished excavating. You guys uh, catch up. You catch your breath. Oh my god! We have, <coughs> and um, we should just go straight to the barrel base. Go ahead and move yourself four squares. We should go north. You want to go straight north? I mean, you're the you're the actual um, scout. So, want to go straight north? Wes? Well, I think he's frozen. You know what I'm going to do, actually, guys? Because you did actually run away. Give me a sec here. I'm just going to roll uh, one more thing. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, my goodness. You're actually over here. No. <laughs> no, not that way. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no. I, you know what? No. So, so, you know, what I did, I rolled a D6 to see what direction you, you kind of scattered, and I rolled a D6 to see how far you would have run. Okay. Well, we could go diagonally north sort of away from it Roan, and then back you can see uh that uh spire that you were looking at before that uh thing from the top of the hill and you hear in very very quietly kind of like as if it's right behind your ear that same kind of like <laughs> as if something was shifting right behind there <laughs> what do you think? Should we go like diagonal? Gonna... Oh. Like this? <laughs> ah, nice. One, two. So you pull the cloak up and it, it you can still hear the sound of it. Let me think here. Let me think here. Actually, you know what? No, it doesn't. It's almost as if it like as soon as you pull, do you activate the non-detection? I do. As soon as you activate it, it, it comes silent. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so that's where you moved. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's two things I need to do here. One, I need to reveal some uh, some areas here. Uh, and two, I need to look at the map because I think you're getting close to something here, guys. Ooh. Oh. Another block pillar that really makes you feel bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it makes me bleed yeah, from right your now, eyes. Uh, let's see here. You're so right on it. One. Two, three. One, two, three. How come the pillars are never like fuchsia? Oh, interesting. So, 
I might need to remove that. Let me think. One, one, two, three. So you, can you see that there, guys? Yep. <clears throat> the edge of something. That is the edge of another barrow. Interesting. What are you guys going to do? Well, we know that the one that's diagonal leads to the entrance. So I think we're going to go with what we know. Okay. And explore the barrel maze. Yeah. Okay. So move basically directly diagonally from here. So one, two, three, and then four to this. Nice. So let's remind ourselves what the entrance to the barrow means, or this entrance at least looks like. So you see in the parting mists, this uh, stone slab on the ground and a dark gash in the side of the hill, which you know leads down into the entrance. Now, last time you were here, there were several fearsome uh, undead creatures that seemed to not be pleased to see you. Those corpses still lie on the ground. As long as they're not walking. They are not. So what are you guys going to do? Walk up and smack one just in case. Okay. What are you smacking it with? A uh, returning light warhammer from about 30 feet. <laughs> okay. So you uh, <laughs> go ahead and get that tonic roll. Okay. Uh, you hit the side of the hill <laughs> and then it uh, returns back to your hand. And it's kind of dirty. It's got like some mud and grass on it. Uh, Vaz kind of looks at uh, you and says, uh, do you need practice with that? You normally use a bow. You don't say. And she leans on her halberd. What are you guys doing? <laughs> okay. Shall we just go in? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. Been a long time. Mm -hmm. So as you guys are um, walking past, you can see um, Gerluck is sort of uh, leerily looking down at these things. And uh, uh, have you guys mentioned that you fought these things before? Um, we'll mention it as we're walking by. Hey, this is our handiwork from yesterday. This is what you did? I can't believe... Ah! And uh, he screams as one of them lurches out and ah! grabs his leg and pulls him towards it and then grabs with the second leg uh, or the grabs of the uh, leg with a second hand. Uh, let's see here. How much damage? Poor Gerlic. Uh Gerlick takes one point of damage as this thing uh, tries to pull him down to the ground. Guys, Steve, roll initiative, please. I got a two. Oh, I got rolled wrong dice. A D8, please. I got an eight. Boom. Boom. Three, you Three. lost, which means it passes. Chad's rolling surprise right now. Passes to Wes. Uh, Chad, let's roll surprise. All right. Mm. Not surprised. Nice. Okay. So then it is. Uh, the, so I rolled an eight. So uh, the, this thing's up first. It yeah, uh, scrambles to its its uh, you know its feet, pulling along on Gerlich's robes, and he's screaming out, "Get it off me! Get it off!" And Kev, how do you how do you want to do my foci though? Now that you change the initiative rules, the which my one? alert one, one cannot be surprised when you roll initiative. Roll twice would take the better result. Ah, uh, let me think about that. I think what I'll say is you get plus one to your initiative instead. So your initiative counts is one higher than everyone else's. And what we'll do is we'll roll d sixes instead of d eight, so that that becomes a more meaningful bonus then. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. All right. So this thing scrambles up, yeah, and then ugh, it grabs its its arms around Gerlich's neck and starts squeezing. Oh, Gerlich takes two more points of damage. Ah, ah, ah. 
gonna uh, die. You guys, what are you doing? Shooting that thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm going to attack it with a cantrip, I guess. Okay. Well, I, you know, I forgot to ask you guys to declare before initiative, so just uh, who would like to go first? Bar Bargle's going? <laughs> All right, so Wes, you fire. No, I feel myself. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so uh, Wes, uh, you do hit, uh, and it looks like it's done a little bit uh, of an effect, but you feel that your um the piercing weapon that you're using is maybe not the most effective thing here once again it's it's very a, a little <sighs> for dead flesh is not a lot <laughs> um okay uh, and actually you can't yeah i can't apply your fray dice uh on this uh yeah because there's only the one target and you're not a magic user who wants to go next Worbin swings his staff around and circles around his head and bellows and charges forward. Yeah! Go ahead and make your attack roll. All right. You should just be able to click on uh, staff, I think. Uh, D20? Uh, yeah, D20 plus... Uh, did I fill out your character sheet, Steve? I can't remember. Uh, no, I've, I've put in a couple stats, but... But no weapon yet? No. What's your bonus on your character sheet? To hit with your quarter staff? It is D eight base attack bonus plus do plus two. Uh, Earth uh, staff plus four. plus four to hit. Okay, so uh damage is uh one D six Yeah, one D six plus four. Hey, see you should have on your character sheet for Werbin, you should have that quarter staff as a weapon now. Oh look at that. Yes. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> Boom. All right, what do we got here? Uh, whoa, that's a hit. Nice. Uh, and four means one point of damage. So you uh, go racing over, and you you know bellow out, swirl this uh, magic staff, your verdant staff around, and poof, you hit this thing, and you actually knock the head clean off this thing. And the, the arms are kind of like, the, the grip seems to, to loosen, or at least you can hear a, a deep gasp of air as Gurla kind of suddenly, like, <sighs> the arms sort of fall down. Clean off Gurlic? What's that? <laughs> Did he knock the head clean off Gurlic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so he, he staggers back, and Gurlic, there's vicious red and uh, bleeding wounds around his neck right now, where this thing is dug its, its uh, disgusting nails into his neck. Yeah. Um, what do you guys? Uh, so he's co co coming back and coughing, and uh, his voice sounds harsh. And he's, uh, he says, "I thought you, I thought you killed those things." Sorry, I thought Mostly. they were all dead. Clearly not. Clearly not. He's alive. Uh, I could cast. Uh, how, bad, how badly injured is he? Should I heal him? Yeah, uh, I could. Cantrip or some minor thing? Who's cur uh, curing? Uh, who is um, controlling Gerlich? I do. I was. Okay, so yeah, so Gerlich's down to one hit point right now. All right, so uh, I'll cast uh, Cure Wounds on him. Okay, so that means he heals two and then roll 2d6, Steve. And uh, he heals uh, whatever, the, we compare it to the damage chart, and uh, he heals that many as well. Boom. Okay, so that's another three. Yeah, so he's at, at full again. What does it look like as you cast Cure Light? Uh, Warbin holds his hands together and uh, and a sort of a blue aura surrounds his hands and then and little sparks uh, sort of launch off them as he sort of hovers, sort of holds his hands above the person and that, that field sort of extends around them. Okay, cool. So and as you do the the sparks of the you know, it's they're sort of blinding, but then once the the light uh, uh, dies down, we see that the, there's no evidence of those injuries that uh, he sustained at all, apart from maybe a little bit of blood staining on his uh, on his robe. <clears throat> he thanks you uh, for uh, uh, for your magics, and then he sort of looks back. He says, "The barrel maze, then." The barrel maze. To the maze. Go in. This is what awaits you inside. 
Um, before we descend, I think I'm going to cast Bless on the party. Okay. Uh, that is my second level uh, spell that I can cast at as many times as I want. Okay. And what does Bless do? Uh, bless gives uh, all allies. It fills fills with the caster's allies with courage, but does not affect enemies. Uh, uh, each ally gains plus one morale bonus and plus one on attacks and damage rolls. Nice. <clears throat> so what does it look like as you cast that, and how does that bless manifest? Uh, oh. It kind of it kind of looks like a halo of sh of sharp teeth that go around <laughs> everybody's heads. <laughs> Blessing enter <laughs> upon you. Uh, and if anybody has uh, is skilled in religion, they will know that this is not a symbol of her and the hunter whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, cool. So um, the, the halo, what's the duration of that? Uh, six turns. Six, oh, six turns. So it's an yeah. hour. That's awesome. Yeah. That's the creepiest bless I've ever heard of. You know what I need to do, shit, uh, uh, <laughs> next time. So there's, yeah, I, I can't get it out because it's pretty uh, far down, but uh, Greg Gillespie's second mega dungeon that he published is this one called um, uh, Forbidden Caverns of Archaea. Uh, and it includes this really fucking cool like wheel for tracking turns and stuff like that. And it's got little markers on it for when torches would go out and stuff like that. Sweet. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's a super cool uh, thing. That I, I need to get that off. Greg that? Gillespie. Yeah, he's awesome. And he's Canadian. Even better. I don't know that doesn't really matter one way or the other, really, but <laughs> still pretty cool. Um, okay, so uh, let's see here, guys. Let me uh, just quickly do, because uh, <clears throat> you know what you've explored before. But, uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't need to, uh, okay, oh, sorry, roll 20 is thinking. <clears throat> I think it broke its brain with the size of this map. <laughs> well, here we go, we're back, we're back. All right, let's see here. Let me get you guys down there. Uh, okay, I'm going to need to do some rescaling here because we're uh, pretty small. Bear maze. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's been a long time since we've seen this map. Yeah. Oop, oh, wait. Yeah. Thankfully, no one's going to try and, you know, put me in a bag, carry me into a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? that was so awesome. That was funny. That made me so happy. Everybody loved the Flying City, but you know what? Didn't have such a great experience. I'd rather go into the freaking barrel maze. Um. Oh, you know what? Shoot. Uh, I forgot to grab your characters. Over here. <clears throat> Where are you guys? Where are you guys? There you guys are. There you are. There you are. Now I gotta find that on YouTube. What's that? For those about to rock. <laughs> so do you, I don't know if you guys remember. Th there's a like. It's only in this in the film for like a second. Uh, but in the wedding singer, uh, do you remember the scene where there's that guy who uh, uh, looks like uh, Boy George, who's who goes up to try and sing his song, and there's that yeah. extra in the crowd who's like, "You suck, you suck." <laughs> yeah, silly Jane about that. I don't know why, but like I ended up when I the first time I saw the wedding singer, I played that back like nine times because it was so fucking funny, and just the guy's delivery was so great. And uh, I, I played that for Jaden because there's a YouTube clip that's about a second and a half long of a guy screaming that. Oh, I don't know why Good I brought times. that up, but uh, that, story just, that bit just makes me laugh every fucking time. <clears throat> okay, here's everybody. So me, who's going down first, guys? Who's the first down into the barrel maze? <clears throat> um, well, Badonk's not scared if nobody's volunteering. Okay. Let's put old. Thanks, nice, dude. Boom. It's good to have a second monitor. Yeah. Okay, so there's Badonka Donk. Uh, who's next? Uh, I'll go down. Good old Wes. 
I can scamper down with my monkey pen. You're a, a veteran of the uh, barrel maze as well, so let's get you down there. Boom. Okay, who's next, guys? I can probably turn uh, off your. We're going to go next. Vasquez gives girl like a little tap with the shaft of her halberd. Says, "I'm not leaving you here up here alone." Okay. Uh, oh, you know, I got to turn these. Uh, hold on, losing turn. room. Let's see here. Oh, there's Chad. So I'm just going to hide the bars here, guys, because uh, it's going to. Oh, Uh, with the bars in, we can't actually see your guys. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, why is this not working? Come on, roll 20, work with me. There we go. Fucking roll 20, come on. What the what? Sorry, guys, this is taking a sweet time right now. Yeah, sometimes it's laggy. Is it just me or are we are we still on the other map? Yeah, you guys are, yeah. I'm just I'm okay. just positioning everyone. Uh first. Let me try. Sorry, let's just take a two second uh thing here. Fucking hell, come on. Oh, you know what? I know what I'm doing. Sorry. Uh, something's blocking my uh, my view here, and I keep hitting cancel instead of save changes. <clears throat> so once again, it is a user error that is causing the problem here. So my apologies, guys. Okay. Um, 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 um. What is? Are you guys going to do the same uh, marching order in uh, in here? Mm. I guess you can't uh, really with uh, with uh, with uh, Badonka flanking that way. I think what what we had done in the past was West would check the door and Badonk would open it. Yeah. And since we were last year, I actually took Wary Dungeoneer as a skill. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> and that goes well with my employing. That goes well with my ruin, ex ruin explorer that I took after the first time you got trapped in that room. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, Chad actually would not be aware of that. Do you want to tell uh, him and by virtue, Roan, uh, what your first significant experience in the barrel maze was? Yeah, so we landed right where we are now, and then we went left down this first hall, right? I think it was room two where this happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Donk went through this door there, and then it slammed shut, and then there were I don't know, a dozen skeletons or something in there? Yeah, there's 12 at least. And they were killing the crap out of me. And I was very quickly going to die. <laughs> and I ran through the second door there up into the area three and climbed up the walls and hid on the roof, attacking them one at a time until uh, I could kill them all. But it was uh, very scary. Yeah, and the whole time I was out in uh, west, out in the hallway with uh, henchmen, I think. With Werbin. Was it Werbin? Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to find a, a way to get the door open. <laughs> a way in the whole yeah, time. I kept rolling for searches, <laughs> and we couldn't do it. And it was right there in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, so Badonk almost there. died. He threatened to commit seppuku. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this room, guys. As you guys come down, uh, I want to give you a. I don't know. My camera will cooperate uh, again, but this is what it looks like as you We're go down into the, it. The helix and uh, barrel more map. There's just, oh, yeah, sorry, I guys, to refresh something. 
proper map here. Here we go. Boom. There you go. How's that? Ooh. Oh, I see. I see mappage. Mm -hmm. So this first room, um, the only way <clears throat> to enter the dungeon at this point is through a hole in the ceiling. An old rusty block and tackle attached to a tripod sits atop the hole and a rope descends down into the room. The ceiling is vaulted and 35 feet high from the floor. The wall has partially collapsed along the western wall. Worn frescoes of a burial procession leading to a barrow mound line the walls. Bones litter the floor. Booted footprints can be seen heading east. A rubble and degree sits throughout. The smells are of dampness and death and scrawled on the wall in some stained kind of sticky substance are the words they are coming and Padonka, your uh, wraps glowing because there were skeletons at the bottom of the rope last time we left and when you look down the hallway guys this is what you see I just zoom in long stretching hallway of blackness. Now, what do you guys want to do? Everybody knows that if Badonk's wraps start glowing, there's undead nearby? They probably I don't know that, actually. Okay, well, just now you do. So for the record, are they, Kev? Uh, they are not. Okay. So if, if I recall, the, we went right that other time and we fought a bunch of giant rodents. And then there was a trapped floor. Yeah, that sounds right. What else was down there? There was that. There was a bunch of doors we never went through. And a brick wall that we tried smashing, but it was making too much <laughs> noise and attracting uh, bad guys. But there was something behind it. Yeah, you I think you attracted a whole second pack of those rats. Yeah. But there was something about that brick wall, remember? Yeah, the it, guy who usually drinks behind you, Wes, was telling me you had some trouble with that wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I have problems with um, having a bit of alcohol and not saying things sometimes. <laughs> Now I just don't drink. So we so want to go, do we go down or do we want to go that second hallway to the north or whatever? What's the lucky goblin think? Um, he thinks we should go left. Let's rub the lucky goblin. Uh, up to the last time, right, right was wrong. So left is better. Yeah. Like the long hallway, we've never been up with the door at the end. Okay. Okay. So um, go ahead and put yourselves in uh, marching order here. Well, who want, who's going first? Wes? Well, I have the Ruin Explorer skill, so I can. Okay. So we'll know. put you up front here. Uh, who is next? Yeah, I'll follow no, yeah. us because people can see over top of us. Okay. Now, um, Badonk has uh, dark vision, um, but none. Uh, and uh, what's his name? Warbin does as well. And I think Roan does as well. Um, Gerlich so and Vaz do not, however. So uh, Gerlich could use his cantrip to concentrate on light, uh, or he could use one of his spells to cast light. Can you cast light on an inanimate object? Yeah, it, it, but he, he uses up one of his first level spell slots if you want to have the duration of the full spell. Otherwise, it's concentration. Hmm. Can he concentrate lighting up my hat? Um, he could. <laughs> I just thought it'd be funny. 
Sure. I mean, he could. Like, if <laughs> if it's the concentration, it's just that as soon as he does something else, that light will go out. And if oh. that's your only source of light, then he and Vaz uh, won't be able to see anything. Actually, yeah. or Wes, for that matter. Or me. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Gerlick, let's see your magical abilities. Why don't you cast uh, that light spell you were talking about that one time? Uh, so he gestures and phew, the end of his staff phew, uh, flashes to light. Um, he speaks some arcane words. This these blue runes sort of swirl around his uh, the end of his staff, and it slowly kind of lights up at like a you know like an in, in, incandescent uh, light bulb, kind of slowly flaring to light. And now you have uh, a source of light uh, as long as he lives. <laughs> Who is going? Uh, where do you want to place him? Do you want him in the middle or sure? Or what? Okay. And then Vaz is going where? Is Vaz holding up the rear and putting the two other casters in the middle or what? Sure. Sure. Okay. Vaz up the rear? Yeah. That's probably pretty good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're being oh. a little handier in the hand to hand. So he's in front of Roan. I don't know. All right. So, Wes, you make your way down to here. And let me just. Oop. All you know, I can do is do this. Boom. I'm going to be checking the floor because we've seen some floor traps already. Okay, well, that will so that will slow your uh, your progress a fair amount. But that is some steady saves the okay. halfling from dying. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Mm -hmm. So you get to there. And let me just check one, uh, two things quickly here. I guess my detect snares and pits wouldn't detect traps, would it? Uh, no, not not uh, fabricated traps, no. Okay. As you reach there, Badonk, your runes, the runes on your... Um, divine wraps flare to life. Oh. And you can hear a <laughs> moaning from the other side of the door that you're next to. And then boom, boom, boom. Something is beating against that door. Like right beside us. Yeah, <clears throat> the door right there. I'll, t I'll tell everyone there's, there's something undead behind this door. <clears throat> Do we try and bar the door or open it and kill it. <clears throat> thump, thump. It's beating against the door. The they can't cut our, cut our escape off. Something's scratching it against it too. And it sounds like there's definitely more than one of these things. Mm. All right. Magic hammer. Everyone prepare and we'll open the door. The magic and hammer out. out. Okay. <laughs> Rones casting mantras and insignias. Okay. Uh, so um, why don't we do this? I'm going to say that you guys will have initiative. Uh, is anybody casting magic this turn? Actually, no. What I'm going to do is we'll declare actions, uh, and then you will um, throw the door open, and we'll roll initiative. I think uh, Wes is rolling initiative right now. So who, what are we doing first, guys? Uh, I will be casting, but it'll be a canter. Okay. Casting. Wes is throwing a magic hammer. Badonk, are you the one opening the door? Yeah, I'll open the door. Okay. Uh, Werbin, what are you doing? I will um, ready my staff. Okay. Get your staff. Uh, what about uh, Vaz and uh, Garlic? Garlic, protect yourself. You got it. And Vaz. What, what does will... that mean? Is he going to cast a spell or is he going to just hang back? Is he going to cast a cantrip? Um, <laughs> I'll look at his sheet. I don't really know much about Garlic. Okay. What about Vaz? Who is uh, 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, who's who's controlling Vaz? Is that you, Jeff? Uh, I can sure. Doesn't yeah, I thought me. you were controlling Gerlach and Wes was controlling Vaz, but oh yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So as long as someone is grabbing someone. <clears throat> Ooh. Well, I have them both open, so <laughs> if we need someone to roll them, I can. Okay. Yeah. So what is Vaz doing then, Jeff? Um. Well, Vaz will get her giant hell beard ready to. Um, okay. Maybe she'll kind of come stand by Badonk. And uh, if they come out, she can sort of reach in to keep them at bay and okay. not let too many through the door at once. Okay. Wes, uh, go ahead and roll a d6, please. I rolled my initiative. I will hold it up to the camera so you know I'm not cheating. I guess I got to turn to whatever side I want, but you'll have to trust that I'm not doing that. Oh! oh. Do, we get to roll? Do we get to roll again? Because I can't be surprised. Oh, we're both surprised. Nope. So, uh, well, this isn't a surprise. Uh, I'm not going to, you guys are both aware of each other's presences. Uh, so no one's going to be surprised. This is for initiative. Uh, so what's going to happen is, well, what we would do is compare dexterities. Uh, and you guys have all higher dexterities than these things. So uh, you guys will be going first. But if that wasn't a tiebreaker, Wes, you would have a plus one. So your roll would have counted as a two. So you would have acted before the rest of the group. Okay. Okay, so um, that's how I'm going to handle that. Uh, right, so uh, the door is thrown open, and four of these shambling, risen corpses, uh, fairly intact, kind of <laughs> stagger out. Uh, I'll see I, <laughs> what I tweeted earlier uh, is, uh, is probably a pretty good uh, uh, descriptor. There we go. <laughs> Beauty. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, yeah. uh, but you guys get to go first. So who wants to go first? There is um, four of these things, and I think I recently used. <laughs> kill it! Kill it with fire! Oh, that's great. <clears throat> okay, so uh, who would like to go first? Uh, I can. I'll roll it up. Okay, go ahead. So, Cantrip, can I use my fray dice on these guys? Uh, yes, these things are are um, lesser foes. So, uh, what does it look like as you? What What does your cantrip look like today? Is it still that lightning, that like black yeah, lightning? We go with that that purplish lightning. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And boom. Yeah. Less awesome. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, you do not connect with the um, uh, the cantrip. It sort of like <laughs> scorches the wall. Uh, but the uh, it does manage to trace its way back and scorches one of them. Uh, does not take it down, unfortunately. These things are pretty uh, pretty solid. Um, who wants to go next? Uh, but I'm gonna attack. Okay. <laughs> uh, That's my guitar. My <laughs> Excuse me. So. I use my divine then, right? Yeah, you use uh, uh, that and then we'll use your attack first. If you hit, then you get to add your divine damage on top okay. of your regular damage. That is definitely a hit. Nice. Holy shit, and four points of damage. So wow. You annihilate that first one that's coming through the door, carry forward and, and uh, smash down a second. Now you also get to roll your fray dice and you get to roll your divine dice. Nice. Fred dice is oh Fuck two more two. damage. Another one's down. And divine and one. Okay, a single damage. So fuck. So there, you throw it open, and while everyone else is <laughs> is like gonna about to jump in faster than you guys can react, so Roan first, you know, scorches this one, and then Badonk leaps in, and in this whirlwind of uh, claws and fury and snapping teeth. Three of these things are now down, and one of them is staggering back, smoldering from the uh, burning divine power that swirled around uh, Badonk's fists. Wow. Who wants to go next? Hey, are, uh, are Biscuit and Bone with us, Jeff? No, they never come down into the barrow. Yeah, they kind of whine at the top looking down. That's right. Gerdick's got a dog, too. 
hanging out with Biscuit and Bo. I think that, uh, yeah. I think that, yeah. Okay, uh, who wants to go next? Uh, we got uh, Werbin well, and Wes and uh, Vaz and Gerlich. Just going to wing the hammer into the room. Yeah. Uh, so with a nat one, yeah, it goes fully into the room. <laughs> so you, uh, let's see here. A nat one, it lodges itself in the other door. And the sound is like, um, imagine taking a sledgehammer and hitting the middle of an eight by eight piece of plywood. So I'm going to roll another random encounter roll. Good job, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. And it kind of echoes wah, 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 off the halls. And you guys can hear <laughs> from off in this direction. Fool of a took. Fool of a took, exactly. Um, okay, then who is uh, left to go, <laughs> to go here? Vasquez Corbin. probably just turns and yeah. gives, gives Wes this like evil glare. Uh, we got Werbin, we got Vaz, we got... Uh, yeah, Vaz hasn't good. rolled yet. She can okay. roll her... Well, she automatically hits, remember? Because she's a fighter. Oh, right. These are electric foes, so just go ahead and roll damage and roll her fray dice. Um, where the heck is her thing? Oh, that's why. I don't actually have it open. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, her Albeard does six Two damage. Points. Six damage. Now. Okay, so this yeah, this one likewise goes down. And she spins around and uh, she says to you, there's more. They're coming. And you can hear from up here the sound of like, imagine someone like racing along in bare feet. That slap, 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 slap of feet against the ground mixed with a, a hungry snarl of a bestial kind of creature. <laughs> You've heard these sounds before. Remember the things that set upon you outside of the barrel maze last time? The bloody yeah. Thing? yeah, those nasty bloodsucker ones. Okay. So uh, let me see here. I'm going to roll. Yeah. True. Okay. So uh, that is the end of the round. Those things are down. Uh, next round, what are you guys doing? You can uh, hear. Yes. Yes. Get out of the hallway. <laughs> Where are you guys going? Okay. So Wes runs over there behind Vaz. Uh, anybody else want to take any actions this turn? Um, yeah, Badonk will move to confront the ones coming that are going to come down that hallway. Okay. Uh, these yeah, are ten by ten squares, so you can, in theory, uh, fit two of you guys up there as well. Okay, so probably Vasquez will. Okay, join me. Vasquez is up there too. Nice. Um, anybody else want to move anywhere? Do you want to close this I'll, I'll door? Back Okay, Werbin is ooh. Um, you can only fit two of you guys in that square, guys. Uh, what I'll say is, like, one of you can kind of peek around the corner, and I'll just uh, imp I'll impose, let's say, like a um, I'll give you cover against attacks uh, that come to you, but I'm gonna impose a minus two to hit, because you're kind of like trying to avoid give your allies space, but also you know leaving enough space for you to look. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, gonna, right. right. I'm going to go get the hammer. Okay. So uh, you want to go get the hammer? Yeah, I'm going to get the hammer. That's in. Okay. I just want to make sure I've got this clear. You're walking into that room on your own. No, Wes is just going to remember to go get the hammer after we fight these guys. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm not going to go get the hammer. That's no, no, I, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I just want to make sure that we've got it clear that you're committing to that course of action. Do I have an intelligence penalty? No, I'm just dumb. <laughs> so you kind of made, you comment about the hammer. Next round. <laughs> They're getting closer. And again, you can hear the pat, 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 the sound of these foot slaps. Uh, they even sound wet, as if the soles of their feet were bloodied from running around this surface raw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone want to do anything else? 
Ah, uh, no. Prepare for the charge. Uh, so as you guys are going around now, you could, uh, remember, you can choose to ready actions if you want, which is if X, then oh. Y. Anybody if ready? If door opens, I shoot an arrow at the first enemy. Okay. Uh, well, you yeah. can't, do you mean the first thing you see or the first, are you taking time to try and decide whether it's an enemy? Uh, anybody that's not us. So yes, anything. Anything around the corner. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else ready any actions? Yeah, I will do the same with the uh, with the cantor. What okay. if it's a priest of Saint Egg? Yeah, help me! <laughs> <laughs> no one say anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else ready in actions? Uh, Badonk or Werbin or Vaz or Gerlich? No, nothing in particular. No? Just got his claws out and he's ready, but. Okay, so then this thing, <clears throat> what you see, basically think of any fast chasing zombie from anything. These comes, there are four of them as well that come racing around the corner and kind of like half slam into the wall and are like <clears throat> and running towards you guys. Donk, Urban, and Wes, you recognize these. Do you remember the adventurers who went down before you? Oh, the dwarf and those others. Yeah, yeah. This is them. Yeah. Uh, now they first come racing around the corner. Uh, let me hold on, you guys. Let me just grab a uh, token from over here uh, because I think. Yeah, there we go. You know, I, in our old Star Wars game, I had a. I'm getting feedback. I think from you there, Stevo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just getting. I'm getting echo from you. Yeah, per perfect. No, I don't hear it anymore. Okay, let's see here. And here it is. That that's what it looks like, guys. Yeah! Uh, Chad, I know you're such Chad, a fan of Godzilla. Godzilla. I thought you'd enjoy a, a zombie kaiju. Okay, I'm getting feedback from some or echo from somebody. Let's see. Marco, Marco, Marco. Yeah, is somebody uh, not have their roll twenty muted? I don't think you're broadcasting and receiving only video. Oh, so I don't know. Oh, I'm, you're echoing as well, too. Chad, go ahead and talk. Uh, I've got uh, broadcast video oh, and video. You're, you're echoing as well. Jeff, go ahead, Jeff, and, talk. Jeff, go ahead and talk. Hello? You're echoing as well. Steve, oh, it's you, buddy. I, I'm, I'm echoing. All right. Uh, we're, we're getting echoes from you. Yeah. So you might need to mute your, uh, your Google Plus just for. Until you I, talk. I, I have my. Uh, well, uh, oh, it seems to be. Yeah, I'm not hearing it anymore. Okay, so what's coming around the corner? Oh, ooh, it's a resizing zomboid. Uh, okay, so there are four of these things. I'm going to copy it at the size it's at right now. Hopefully, it'll paste. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things have run in the corner. Uh, those with ready actions, feel free to let loose. <clears throat> uh, okay, and you can go ahead and just roll. You don't need to. Uh, we don't need to go turn by turn for this uh, round because they're all just going. Okay, cool. So Wes <laughs> and short foes. Are, are they lesser foes or no? Well, I can uh -huh. use my phrase. They are uh, these things. Uh, these things are lesser foes for everyone uh, except for the two henchmen. Hey. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Um, Wes is doing piercing, dice. piercing damage, though. Piercing. Oh, okay, so that first one uh, does, it, it connects, but it doesn't seem to do an awful lot. Um, and then you're, you unleash with another arrow. Uh, which l five is, uh, yeah, f and that does seems to do not, has no effect on it. Uh, Werbin, um, you can't attack with your quarter staff right now because they're not close enough. <coughs> uh, what you could do, Steve, remember you can uh, do a cantrip attack uh, if you choose. Uh, Roan, like what, what Roan just did, and uh, yeah, Roan, that absolutely hits. Uh, that does uh, one. Uh, six and four for damage because of the bless. Oh, right. So it's a six. So that is actually, yeah. So it's two points. And I'm not going to apply the bless to it. That's uh, Your Freight Dice is not an attack. 
Okay. Yeah, so it won't um, apply to that. But uh, yeah, so that's five. Uh, so it's one, two, uh, three points of damage. Yeah, so one of these things is scorched to the ground again with the power of your dark magic. <laughs> and um, there's a, f a halo of flared, vicious teeth that appears above your head as you unleash that as well. Uh, Wes, uh, oh, right, Wes gets plus one damage. Hold on. Hold on, Wes. <coughs> you know, eight doesn't make a difference. With six, it does. Okay, so actually, you know, Wes, you do manage to connect and do a little... I don't know, that's the fray. I just said it doesn't apply to that. Sorry. Um, okay, so that's a round. Now, Werbin, were you trying to uh, prepare a an attack for when they're in, in melee range? Is that what you're rolling for? Oh, Steve, you're muted, bud. Okay. While can we're you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can yeah. You? Okay. Sorry. So you couldn't hear me before? No. Nope. What'd you say? Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, no, I would say, uh, yeah, why don't I do a cantrip attack? Okay. So cantrip will give uh, plus a four, uh, and it does uh, 1d4 plus three damage. So um, plus five on my sheet. Oh, plus five. Okay, so let's see here. Let me. Uh, is it plus five to hit and one d? Sorry, how much damage does it do on your sheet? One d four plus three. Okay, so it's plus five to hit one d four plus three. Give me one sec. I'll just quickly add that to your character sheet so that we. Um, okay. Look at that! You got yourself a cantrip attack now. Boom. <clears throat> Check it out. Nice. All right. Now, what does your cantrip look like? Uh, remember that you, you can kind of like, as long as it fits the theme of your uh, of your types of magic, what do you think it is? It's like a bull, a uh, bright shining white blue bolt that did blast from my hand and just flies to the target. Nice. So there's this brilliant natural lightning that flares out from Warbin's hand. It does uh, plus one is seven, uh, two points of damage. Nice. Uh, you'll hit the one that um, Wes has been peppering, and it goes down. So the two of you guys combined <laughs> manage to take uh, one of these hungry things down. Uh, then they come racing in against the two first uh, guys there. Uh, Vaz will for sure get a chance to attack first because her weapon's longer. Um, Badonk... Did you say you, um, I didn't, I don't recall hearing you say you were going to ready an action to attack as soon as they're in melee, but I take it that's what you were no, trying to do? No. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, we need an attack from Vaz and attack from uh, <clears throat> uh, Werbin. And remember, Vaz is an automatic hit, and both of you guys can apply your fray dice against these things. Okay. And it's plus one to hit, trouble. plus one to damage with your attack because of the blast. <clears throat> oh, so Vaz does... What is the? Do you have a name for the source of your power, there, bro? Um, or do you know it? It's just you know there's a source of power. He does not know it. Uh, he probably says something different almost every time. So <laughs> nice. It's the goat of a thousand names, right? I learned this on the dock in Specularum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Vaz does twenty-one wow. to hit. Six damage would be two damage. Yeah. We'll go ahead and roll her fray. Her fray Another is one. one. So how does she take this thing down with her uh, mighty halberd? Is it just one like, just, clean just shot? Just right through him. His flesh is obviously rotted since you know we were what? here. She actually can't do her fray dice against the same target. She has to do it against another target. So one oh. of them takes one. That's a, it's the same thing for you as well. So uh, maybe, I think you guys just sort of work together. As long as you... Uh, roll one point of damage with your um, oh. oh, so that's not a good to hit. So you miss with your attack, but you still get to do your fray. Nice. Okay, so you the one that Vaz was facing uh, did go down, and then she did one point of damage to the one that you uh, attacked, but uh, you didn't get to connect. So then this thing uh, goes racing in and tries to attack you. Plus three, 19. Yeah, so that's a hit. This thing goes crashing into you, Badonk, and you're sort of like both clawing and scratching and biting at each other. You take two points of damage. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, okay, so that is the and they're in Molina. We've got uh, let's see who hasn't gone yet. Uh, I guess Gerlick, but he can't really see anything. So guys, top of the round. Wes, go ahead and roll a d6 for me. I rolled a five for the zombies. For zombie, I guess technically. Ooh, <laughs> so, uh, Wes, you're at first because you got plus one. So, so you, what do you want to do? Oh, and I think you might be muted, Dave. Indeed. <laughs> uh, my arrows suck, but that's what I do. And the hammer is still wedged in the other room. So, yes. okay, uh, that that's a hit. I guess their armor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. So that is yeah. Fuck. Four points of damage. So even though you um, are using a piercing thing against this. You've kind of like corrected your shot. You look for the most vulnerable part, and you unleash your arrow. I'm getting uh, echo again. Uh, Steve, I think you might need to mute. Sorry, sir. I think you might need to mute again. We're getting a pretty bad echo from you. Sorry. Um, okay, so you unleash this, and the uh, shot goes basically uh, it, it, as this thing is is clawing and biting at at uh, Badonk. It brings its head back. You shoot and manage to basically sever the bulk of its spinal cord. And uh, its broken jaw sort of hangs loose. And as it tries to move forward and bite Badonk, it tears loose the uh, head. And as soon as that uh, kind of mostly disconnects and tears off, the body kind of goes limp. And Badonk, you're able to f toss it to the ground next to you. And uh, it no longer moves. Perfect. And unfortunately, guys, we're coming up to quitting time. So why <laughs> is it? <laughs> you have technically made it back to the barrel maze. Although so many fucking <laughs> random encounters on the way here. Um, what is the reason for you guys turning back at this point? Probably ill. Maybe it's the, sh you know... The fear of seeing what's become of the other adventurers. Oh, you love it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. We should uh, we <clears throat> that we can try to loot the bodies. We should pick through their remains and see if we can figure out what what happened to them. Why did they turn this way? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, you, you are, are there, like you, visible you marks or and you, you you sort of can see just on the edge of uh Gerlich's, uh this the light uh cast by Gerlich's staff. You can see that scrawled marking on the wall. They are coming. And you think you may have an answer for your question. Uh, now, give me a sec here, guys. I'm going to the treasure chart. Hey, Gerlick, come closer. Let's see this light. Okay, so let's, uh, who's going to give me a... Oh, I'll just roll this here because yeah, it'll take less time this way. Uh, there is because... The, I think the last one you faced there, uh, Badonk, that was actually that dwarf that you uh, spoke to. Mm. No. No. Ooh. Someone give me a D6 roll, please. Oh, I closed the three. Door. Nice. Okay. So you find three gems on this. Uh, who's our, uh, someone's re recording this, right? I think Wes, I see you writing. <clears throat> Who is the group treasurer? Uh, I had some stuff written down from the barrel war from November 2nd, but okay. we've already sold it. Okay. So this is the new stuff. So, uh, you find one gem worth 10 GP, another worth 75 GP and yet another worth 10 GP stuffed in the belt of uh, this thing. Nope. Mm, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, so you find it, there's actually um, one of these uh, disgusting corpses 
Uh, I think the one that's been scorched by both Roan and Werbin, uh, that one, um, one of them has a, a the remnants of a robe on, uh, as if it was some kind of maybe priest or uh, a caster. Uh, it has at its uh, it's tuft uh, in its waist. Uh, there is a wand. And in the smallest of them, oh, fucking badass. So I was turning to the uh, Scarlet Heroes version of the magic items because this is pretty cool. You see that on one of them, which is the largest of the, uh, of the uh, group. <clears throat> actually, no, I said it was the smallest, and that actually kind of makes sense. So the smallest one has these ornate uh, gauntlets on its uh, uh, wrists. And these are, of course, uh, with the assistance of... Um, do you have Detect Magic, Ro? Uh, I don't, no. No, okay, so then it's uh, with uh, Gerlich's help. You can identify these oh, things. Okay. Sorry. Oh, you yeah, do? Okay. All right. So this is, uh, uh, let's see here. The, the gauntlets themselves, um, they have the same kind of, uh, actually, they have uh, uh, probably uh, the kind of stylings of the uh, dwarves of the Blue Mountains uh, on them. <clears throat> and they have kind of a uh, oily, silvery, kind of sheen to them and what these are is of course gauntlets of ogre power nice. wow so these will grant the wearer strength of 18 so plus oh. three to hit plus three damage plus a modifier for uh, uh what he calls <coughs> excuse me for encumbrance and you can punch doing 1d4 points of damage Wow. Wow. We'll have to think about what to do with those. Uh, and then the wand. And I got to check how many charges it has, uh, but the wand makes any enemies that uh, of the wielder that are within 60 feet, whether invisible or hidden, become surrounded by a fiery, glowing aura. Hmm. And this thing has. Someone give me a percentile check for me. Please. Someone doing it? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Sorry, I was writing down. Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it has one charge left. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so well, and, th and that's why they got turned into ghouls or whatever. Because yeah, you know, really, equipment no, no, wasn't all just working. Save it. Just save it. Save it for later. <laughs> well, we oh, can't see these guys. Awesome. Okay, cool. So you got uh, two. Wow. So uh, the the remember the rules of the um, uh, what do you call it of the magic item stuff. The rules of the house are it's the the party the group that's on the adventure. It goes to one of you guys. Um, there really is only one weapon or one left. So do you want me to just roll a D four and see which of the PCs gets a, a first dibs on it? Sure. Okay. So Badonk is one. Werbin is two. Roan is three. Wes is four. Everyone remember what, uh, numbers they are. Yeah. Yep. Here it comes one, two, Three, boom. Werbin. Werbin, our ogre powered dwarf. You have, they are of dwarven make. So, Werbin, as long as you wear these things, you have 18 strength, giving plus three to hit, plus three to damage, and you uh, can punch for 1d4 plus three damage. <laughs> Steve is literally speechless. Thanks to being muted. <laughs> Thanks being muted. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me roll. Super sweet. There we go. All right. Nice. 
Okay, so uh, I rolled. Okay, so yeah, the the trip back, guys, is actually uneventful. I rolled for uh, random encounter street, guys. And what am I zoomed in here? Um, so you are able to make your way back to uh, uh, what do you call it? To um, Helix uh, without other uh, incident. Um, <clears throat> You don't recognize the the adventurers in today, or at least Badonk and, and Wes. You don't remember uh, recognizing these guys from before, I don't think, uh, or they may have been like one of uh, you know a hundred faces that you saw passing through the crowd. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so you now, guys, I do have one other bit of eventful news to share here. Garlic is no longer a useless level one. Gerlick has only been on two adventures, so he's not quite there. Oh, oh no, he would be second level now. But more importantly, Roan, Werbin, welcome to level four, guys. Ooh. Baby. Nice. <laughs> so I will show you the, well, if you take a look at the uh, Mad Hack document, uh, you will see what uh, what stuff you, uh, you gained over. Oh, thanks, George. George says, great show, guys. Thanks, George. Um, and then we will I'll update your sheet there, Werbin, with your new uh, documents, or your documents, your new uh, uh, treasure. But yeah, wow. We've gotten one more. So, Roan, you've actually seen the inside of the barrow maze now. Finally, it's terrifying. <laughs> I think yeah, it's sort of a rite of passage for everyone to nearly die their first time in the barrow maze, <laughs> or at least one character to nearly die. Uh, and actually, oh yeah, Gerlich. Gerlich almost died. It's been a while since you guys have had a henchman die. I really got to step up for this. I mean, <laughs> we're, 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 we're the henchmen being dragged off to be devoured by ghouls while they're still alive. Like, Yeah, this, that was a rather gruesome episode there. That was still haunts Wes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Still haunts me a little bit, too. In the sense that I giggle to myself when I think of it. Uh <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing uh, video here, and I'll get out of the thing, and we will do our outro. Um, oh, I'm doing here. So I'm gonna close this. Goodbye, and I'll turn this back on. Boom. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so first off, uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for another expedition. This is uh, session 26, I believe. Uh, yeah, 26 sessions of the uh, Barrow Maze campaign. What an eventful evening. Back to the Barrow Maze again. We are back on track and slowly making progress in the Barrow Maze. I'm sure that there are some valuable lessons that our heroes have learned from uh, this uh, session. Sorry, Steve, I'm just going to mute you for a second here, buddy, because I keep getting... Oh, did you mute yourself? Uh, can I can mute you. Let me see here. Boom! Muted. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> I'll come back to you now before we uh, log off. Um... So yeah, so that was a uh, session 26. Now, at the time of recording, uh, a week from now is actually going to be a uh, Boxing Day, I believe. Uh, so we will not be recording a session for Boxing Day uh, um, unless everyone's... I uh, will be dropping off uh, Jaden at uh, the airport or my son at the airport to fly uh, back to uh, uh, home or his hometown. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be around, but well, we may have a session or we may have a thing uh, next week. Uh, we may not. Um, and then I'm not sure what the schedule is like between now and the end of year. So we will be, it will be subject to the availability of the players and so forth. So we may not have another session until 2019, but, um, yeah, but we will be definitely back in the new year, uh, with, uh, a bunch of more horrors to be found in the barrel maze. Um, I want to, of course, uh, oh, for a second thing I'll mention is, uh, if, uh, <clears throat> you are um if you enjoy the session uh, or if you enjoy the content of the channel i would ask that you consider clicking through the link in the description that leads you through to the heroes save villages campaign that is the charity fundraising campaign that we're running on the channel uh something where we have paired up with sos children's villages international and thanks to the very generous donations from the uh, viewers of the channel and the players on the channel we've actually meet, met our goal for the year of raising a thousand dollars for them so um I am very, very happy to see that uh, that amount of money going to the um, uh, to the good folks at SOS Children's Villages International. Uh, any donations go completely to them. Uh, none of it goes uh, to the channel. None of it goes to uh, 
uh, any bureaucracy or, or whatnot. It goes all to help them do the very good work that they do for kids. You can find more information about SOS Children's Villages uh, at the, uh, or international, uh, at, the, uh, at the link and learn more about the campaign as well. We have some neat uh, rewards available on there too, including some uh, charity sessions uh, that I will run uh, for you, your friends, or you and my friends. Um, I also have a bunch of other smaller uh, rewards on there as well, including introducing an NPC to the campaign, like our stalwart fighter Vasquez, who was uh, introduced by one of the generous donors who uh, is a viewer as well. Um, <clears throat> finally, I want to thank my players, as always. Guys, this was a really fun session. I I'm, I'm apologize for not getting further into the barrow maze and the continual stream of bullshit that I throw at you as you're making your way through the barrow more. But at least there were no piranha flies tonight. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a bonus uh, dave jeff steve thanks so much for playing tonight guys this was great uh if i don't see you guys beforehand i hope you all have a very very happy holiday have a great christmas and uh enjoy your time away from the barrel maze i hope that you and your characters recover from the trauma that i have been inflicting on them and i look forward to inflicting more trauma on them in the new year uh so um uh, oh, I guess the last thing I'll say as well is just that if you uh, if you want to find more about me, or rather you want to enjoy more of my content, uh, you can also find on uh, any of your favorite podcast platforms. You can find my new podcast, Dungeon Musings. I know, terribly clever, named after the same uh, name as the YouTube channel. Um, you can also reach me if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this uh, by leaving a comment in the comment section below. Uh, you can uh, shoot me a tweet. On Twitter, I've become more active on Twitter now that I've discovered GIFs because they make me the happiest. I'm a simple creature, so I really do enjoy moving pictures. Uh, on Twitter, you can reach me at Dungeon Musings, all one word and plural, or you can shoot me an email at DungeonMusings at gmail.com. So um, with that, I think we will bring this eventful session to the close, and we'll see you guys back at the Barrel Maze very soon. Thanks all. See you soon.